we're doing is we're teaching the so-called black, Hispanics, and the Native Americans that we are not Gentiles, That's right. but we are the Israelites according to the Bible, right? So the way that we know this is, I'm going to ask you a simple question. How did our forefathers come over here to this side of the earth? Be honest with you, we be coming from the different countries. Uh, right, right. But what mode of transportation brought us over here? Did we walk? No. And how did we get over here? We saw the like frog here. Can we walk over here? No, let me take that back. Uh, we, we walk over this way. So we walk here? coast of Africa, what mode of transportation brought us over here to this side of the land? Ships, right? Yeah, do you agree? Boats, right? So, is that in the Bible? Yes. Right, so what we have, so, so you know that that's in the Bible? Okay, so, and my sister, how long have you been knowing that you are a Hebrew? Uh, a couple years. Oh, a couple years? Okay, so, do you study with anybody? Uh, I have someone like you. Okay. Okay, so I want you to listen to this. Uh, yeah, what's your name, bro? Jarrell. Jarrell. Hey, sister, what's your name? Elena. Elena, Elena and Jarrell. All right, so I'm going to show y'all how we can actually prove or identify who we are according to the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is Moses. Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. He said, if y'all do not listen to God, that curses will come upon you. Is a curse a good or a bad thing? A bad. So is a curse? Yeah, these are your children? Yeah, do you know about a curse? Like, what, is that, what's her name? Reagan. Reagan. And what's her name? Hannah and Reagan. So is a curse a good or a bad thing? Bad, right? So God said, well, Moses told the children of Israel that if you do not listen and if you do not do God's commandments, that curses would be placed upon uh, us as a people. So now we're going to go into some of these curses to identify who we are today. Read on. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in this city. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So Moses said that we would be cursed in the city. Are we cursed in the city? So what ways are we cursed in the city? Poverty. Poverty. Okay. So what else? Economically. Then what you got, Respect. Respect. Right. The so-called black man gets no respect in America or anywhere on the planet, right? Right. So what else? Education-wise? Are we at the bottom? Um, Medical-wise? We're at the bottom, right? So Moses said that if we did not keep his law, statutes, and commandments, that curses would come upon us, and one of those curses would be us being cursed in the city. It tends on to um, commandment in the Bible anyway. Thou should not steal right? for one thing, and thou should not steal. Right? There are ten commandments, but guess what? There's, there's over... Um, there's, there's over 300 laws in the Bible. There's, there's the ten, but then there's sub-laws underneath those ten. For example, thou shalt not rape. Is that in the Ten Commandments? Not particularly, right? But can we rape? No. No, no. So guess what? There are other laws that we have to follow besides just the 13. Uh, 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 besides just the 10, right? right. But, yeah, we're going to get into that. But it says that curse shall we be in the city, and curse shall we be what? And curse shall thou be in the field. So I want you to take a look at this right here. It says that we will be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. What were we doing in the field? Picking cotton, tobacco, sugar cane, uh, rice, yeah, you name it. Berries. Berries. Yes, sir. That right there, that's, that's a cage. So if the slaves were bad, they would put this cage over their head to prevent them from eating. They will be slavery too, though. Okay? Right, so what we're showing here is being cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Right, so as you can see, our sisters, they pick cotton. 
road on Austin Lane Park. So what we're showing you is that all these things were actually Bible prophecies that happened to the Israelites, and it actually came to pass. So this was written over 3,000 years ago, but it only came to pass during 1619, right? So what we're showing you is these curses are going to identify who God's chosen people are today. But read on. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy stool. Hey, bro, you haven't heard? <laughs> hey, bro, you haven't heard the most important part? Yeah, oh, go ahead. <laughs> so it says that we'll be cursed. Uh, our basket and our stores will be cursed. So do we, as a people, do we own, let's just say, no. Advanced Auto Park? No. Do we own Foreman Mills? Do we own Mammoth? No. We don't own hardly anything. We may have a couple businesses throughout the city, but we don't have any, like, a, like a Walmart. We don't own, like, a, a franchise or a chain of, of stores across the earth, right? So we would be cursed in that area to where if we did open up a, uh, a store, it wouldn't last long, right? It may last maybe two years, but other than that, it will close, right? So we would be cursed in that area. Now, I want you to jump over to verse 68, right? So watch this, because I asked y'all, how did we come to this side of the earth, right? And, and my sister, she said, shit, both. And according to the Bible, that's actually in here. Read that. Chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God said that he would bring the Israelites into Egypt a second time. So if you know anything about the Bible, Egypt, we walk into Egypt, right? And we walk out with Moses, right? So he said a second time. But we never went back into Egypt a second time, right? Not as a nation of people. But he said, this time we're going to go into Egypt with ships. So Egypt means something. Egypt means slavery or bondage. Bondage, all right? So I want you to read it again with the understanding that Egypt means slavery or bondage. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into slavery or bondage the second time. How? With ships. With what? With ships. So wait a minute. What nation of people went into slavery on ships? Yeah, did, you, did your people go into slavery on ships? Your people never went into slavery on ships? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, right. So what we're reading, we're reading Bible prophecy that actually came true, right? So any other nation cannot claim to say that they went into slavery or captivity on cargo slave ships. So what we're showing you is that according to the Bible, the so-called black, Hispanics and the Native Americans, we are the Israelites, we're God's chosen people. But guess what? It's going to get even more specific. Read on. By the way world, I spake unto thee. So Moses said, the same way that I'm telling it to you, how y'all are going to go on slave, uh, slave ship, is exactly how it's going to happen, Reese. Thou shalt see it no more again. And we're not going to see our homeland again as a people because the Israelites' homeland was Israel or Jerusalem, right? Read. And there... Ye shall be sold. So after you get off those slave ships, you're going to be what? And there ye shall be sold. It says that we will be sold to who? Unto your enemies. We will be sold unto our enemies? No, our friends. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Uh -huh. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And bond women. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall redeem you out of the condition that you're in. Who did that happen to? Repent. So, what does it mean to repent? 
turn away from our ways and turn to what? Store yeah, but specifically, we have to turn towards what he told us to do and what he tells us to do. To follow his commandments, right? So in order to follow his commandments, you have to know his commandments, right? So sis, I have a commandment for you. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Right, so watch this, because we went into slavery for breaking God's law. Hey, bro, how you doing? <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, what we are here doing is we see the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, their true nationalities. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. Do you believe in the Bible? Okay, so watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. And listen up. Yeah, read it again. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Okay, so let's deal with the last part. It says that a man should not put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment that men wear today? Huh? A dress? Like you've seen uh, 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 Kanye West, uh, Will Smith, son, Jaden Smith, uh, Young Thug. You've seen men wearing dresses, right? Gotti. Yo, Gotti. Like, you've seen men wearing dresses. The Bible says that a man should not wear what belongs to a woman. But in the first part, it says that the woman shall not what belongs to a man. What belongs to a man? Huh? you differentiate. So if you're if you're a woman wearing pants and you're a man wearing a dress, that's called cross dressing. God doesn't like that. That's why he gave specific instructions, which is a law, on thou shalt not wear, right? Because that pertains to clothing. So women are supposed to wear pants. Yeah, do you understand that, sis? So are you going to change that? You'll work on that? So guess what? Repentance is, you said it, turn it around. So we have to turn around as a people because what got us into the condition that we in today? Right. Breaking God's law. Breaking God's law put us on the bottom of society. Right? So brother, I want you to take a look at this time. Where do you see yourself at on this time? Yeah, so we're going to go through some more uh, laws. Yes, we are. Yeah, where do you see yourself? It goes by the house of your father. And yeah, would your father be considered an uh, African American? So you would be from the tribe of Judah. So I want to ask y'all, who else came from the tribe of Judah? Who else came from the tribe of Judah? Because the tribe of Judah is a mighty tribe. What makes the tribe of Judah so mighty? I'm going to show y'all. Hebrews chapter 7. You probably know this. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. Read that. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. Uh -huh. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Who is our Lord? Who is our Lord? Yeah, when the Bible talks about the Lord, yeah, who is it talking about? Huh? God? God? Jesus. Jesus. Is that his son? Yes, Jesus is God's son. So it says that our, it's evidence on the earth that Christ came out of the tribe of Judah. So guess what? If y'all didn't know that y'all have Jesus Christ's name running through y'all blood if y'all from the tribe of Judah. If Christ was walking the earth today, he would be considered a so-called black man or African American. And, and we're actually going to prove that. Give me Revelation, yeah, chapter 1, and verse 14. So we were going over this earlier about which image is Christ and which image is not Christ. Hey, hey brother, let me ask you a question. If you can step over here, which image do you think is Christ? Is it the one on the left or is it the one on the right? Okay, so you say the one on the left. Yeah, Christ, well, Christ. Christ. Well, which image do they push and tell you that it's Christ? Right, they push that one. But what, what if, which image are we worshiping today as a people? You may not be, well, you may not be worshiping it, but a lot of us are worshiping that image. Because with this image comes um, Christmas, Are you worshiping God or are you worshiping Satan? You're worshiping Satan. Are you worshiping Satan? 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 Are you worsh
worship in Satan. Right? So I want to get the true image of what Christ really looks like. Hey, bro, y'all, you got to leave? Okay, so we, all right, so we're about to go over what Christ actually looked like. Read that. Revelation 1, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Hey, uh, get, hey uh, give my man a flyer. So the first thing he says that Christ, the hair on Christ's head and the hair on his face were white in color, woolly and textured. White in color, woolly and textured. So I want to ask Hannah and what's your name? Reagan. Hannah Reagan. I want you to look at this right here. Which one has white hair and is woolly? Is it this one right here or that one? So it's this one right here, right? So the first description says that Christ's hair was white color, woolly and textured. Who has woolly hair? Yeah, do you have woolly hair? Yeah, have you ever seen a sheep? Yeah. How is the sheep hair? Is it poofy or does it look long and stringy like that? It's poofy, right? So Christ's hair was poofy, like our hair is, right? Right, so when you grow, throw your hair out, wash it, and it dries, it's thick enough, right? That's how my hair was. It was it was kinky or what some people call nasty, right? So that's the first description of what Jesus looked like according to the Bible. But it's gonna get even more specific. Read on. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says that Christ had eyes that was as a flame of fire. Why do you think Christ had his eyes were as a flame of fire? If you don't know, do y'all know what Christ's first miracle was? He changed water into wine. He changed water into wine. So when adults drink wine, it changes the whites of their uh, the whites of their eyes red. So Christ drunk wine. He wasn't an alcoholic, but Christ drunk wine in moderation. So that's why the whites of his eyes were red. Now we're about to prove that. Oh, yeah, give me Genesis chapter 49. Read that. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. So up. this is to prove why his eyes were red. Read. His eyes shall be red with wine. It says that his eyes shall be red with wine. That was a prophecy written in Genesis when Christ would come on the scene that his eyes would be red with wine. And we understand that Christ's first miracle was changed of water into wine. Go back to Revelation. Pick up where you left off. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, woolly in texture, white in color, like an old man, like, like mine, right? Read. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were the flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet. So, and the rest of your body. Yeah. Right, it's the same color, right? And, right? So, now I look down at Christ's feet, and, and he said, what? Look like fine brass. Do y'all know what color brass is? Brown, right? Brown. It's like a penny. Have you ever seen, seen a penny? That would be like the color of, of brass. So now it says that that not only was Christ his hair woolly in texture and, and white color, his eyes were red, but it says that his feet were brown in color. But now it's going to get even more specific. Watch this. Read. As if they burned. In a furnace. So it says it, as if it burned in a furnace. So you take that brown penny and you put it in a furnace. Have you ever seen somebody burn something like toast? What color did it turn out? It was black, right? So if you put anything in a furnace, it's going to turn out black, right? Read it again. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. And his feet like a divine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So it says that his feet was the color of fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So we understand that Christ would be considered a what color man? What color was it? Black. Black. So if you look at these, these two images now, because y'all will probably see these pictures everywhere and people saying that that's Jesus. But according to the Bible, what we just read, this would be a more... A, a better description of what Jesus Christ looks like. And he looks like us. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed.
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.